Hey guys, let me give you a quick freebie on the best way to sharpen web landscape images. Today, still, the very best way to get the most fine detail in an image, that micro detail that we want, the very best way still to do this is the step down method. And there's a lot of variants on it. But let me just give you one. If you want to learn all the ins and outs of ultimate web sharpening, just check my website. I have a video there that has everything that you will ever want to know about web sharpening there. But the truth is, today, the very best method if you want to get the most fine sharpening is using variants on the step-down method that Mark Adamus pioneered and innovated. So let me just give you the gist. This isn't the one recipe, but this is how I generally do it. And I admit, I like to do web sharpening more manually. You could create an easy action to make this stuff go by really fast, but this will open up some people's eyes to how to get that super micro fine detail and also how to custom sharpen your web images. Let me just say that this is not gonna work for portraits. This is strictly for landscape photography. So let me just give you the gist. And I'm actually going to sharpen my image right now the way I would be approaching it today. After I'm done, I'll make a final tweak or two on this image in terms of levels. Sometimes sharpening will make your image a little bit too bright in the middle tones. So I might make that one last levels adjustment or color adjustment once this thing has been sized down. Now this image is going to be targeted for 500 PX. That's why I'm on a black background because that's how they're displayed over there. Step one, image, image size, Make sure you're using bicubic smooth gradients. When I tell people use bicubic, they're like, well, which one? Well, there's only one, bicubic, but it's for smooth gradients. There's bicubic sharper and bicubic smoother. It is correct that bicubic smoother is the best algorithm that Adobe has for enlargements. Preserve details, actually, that is a good one too. I use a combination now of bicubic smoother and preserve details, and that is going to be in a revision of my video tutorial, The Ultimate Sharpening Workflow for Fine Art Printing. Don't have it on automatic, which is the default for Adobe, because it's going to choose the wrong one for sizing down. It's going to choose bicubic sharper. For sizing up, it will choose by cubic smoother, but you also want to have the option of using preserved details. So again, I would go into your Photoshop presets, and I'm not going to show you how to do that right now, but I would change it and put it on by cubic as your default because most people size down for web a lot more often than they size up for print. So then if you're going to do a print, then there's definitely a use for bicubic smoother and preserve details for those smooth areas in your image. But that's a whole nother story. So don't use sharper. I can always tell when people use sharper, there's a weird look to their images. It just doesn't look as nice. Use bicubic, also in parentheses, smooth gradients. So step down method. You don't have to change the resolution. There's a whole argument about all of that, but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna punch it in 72 just because I've been doing that forever and ever. And I am going to make the height about kind of like half size. If you want specific numbers, again, refer to my video tutorial and check my website. But I'm gonna take it down to about 3000. This is the Sony A7R2 image. And so I've got a 42 megapixel image. I'm sizing it down to around 3000 pixels tall. If it was a wide image, I'd do the same thing for wide instead. I'm going to size it down. Now I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to zoom up on this image to 100% viewing distance. And that's down on the bottom left hand corner. I'm going to get an area that has sort of just a good view on everything. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to duplicate that layer. So the bottom layer Name background, I don't name my layers, but I'm just gonna do this to help you guys out. This is gonna be no sharpening. The next one up is gonna have some capture sharpening on it, which really is not capture sharpening because I already have capture sharpened this image at the raw stage, just the land, not the water, not the sky, nothing else, not the lightning. And what I'm gonna do here 
is I'm going to apply what's called deconvolution sharpening, the finest possible sharpening you can get by making my radius to the left and detail to the right, and then I'm going to go ahead and up the amount. At this point, I'm going to probably bring it into about 50, and then I'm going to use the mask by holding down Alt, grabbing the masking, and probably bring it in to about 20 points so that it's masked out of the sky and out of the smooth water. Now this is just sort of a base of sharpening that we may or may not draw from. So you don't have to worry too much about having a perfect mask for the sky, perfect mask for the water, whatever. This is just a little bit of tightening up. This same general algorithm, deconvolution, can also be accessed through smart sharpening and you can fade it out of the shadows and highlights and the smooth surfaces there as well. Sometimes I will do that. And when you do that, you need to use the lens blur option, not the Gaussian. The Gaussian is a unsharp mask-like algorithm, and the lens blur is the deconvolution, ultra-fine type sharpening. So once we've done that, I'm going to hit OK. The image is tightened up. That's the second one up, so this would be deconvolution sharpening. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to duplicate that. Again, this can be turned into an action, so you can just push a button and all of this is done for you. That's up to you. Anybody who knows how to make actions will be able to do that easily. So I'm now going to duplicate the deconvolution layer three times. Command J, J, J. So bottom, no sharpening. Next one, deconvolution. The third one up, I don't even need to check the eyeballs, but I'll just do it so you can see what's going on here. I'm gonna go ahead and go to Unsharp Mask, I have a shortcut, and I'm gonna go at a 0 0.2 radius, 500 amount, and zero threshold. The threshold is pretty much worthless in my opinion, or I'd just say it's totally worthless. 500 amount and easing up the radius, that's to get the most fine sharpening out of Unsharp Mask. It is not deconvolution sharpening, but it is the finest sharpening you can get out of that algorithm. So I'm going to go ahead and hit OK. The next layer up is going to be the same thing, but it's going to be at 0 0.3, so it's going to be a little bit more aggressive. And the next one up, we want it to be overly aggressive. We're going to go to 0 0.4. This usually suffices completely for everything we need to do. So if you wanted to name your layers, you got no sharpening, you got deconvolution, deconvolution plus 0 0.2, deconvolution plus 0 0.3, deconvolution plus 0 0.4. That's what you would maybe write there. And that could just be an action. The next step, this is the step down method. This is where you over sharpen, then size down again, and you get a finer sharpening than any algorithm on the market today. Better than any third party software as well. So, image, image size, again using bicubic smooth gradients. Now we're going to go down to a height of, I'm going to go 1250. That's about as big as you can go on 500px vertically. You can go a little bit bigger than that. I think it's like around, almost 13. But I'm going to go 1250 for a height. And then I'm going to hit OK. And all that extra sharpening gets reduced down and becomes this ultra fine sharpening. Now, the lightning looks horrible. There are halos and there's definite over sharpening all over the place. But here's what you do. And lightning always does look really weird when you over sharpen it. Go down to the bottom. The bottom is no sharpening at all. Look at your image at a viewing distance that's appropriate to get up kind of close on it, but not too close. And go through the layer stack and find the one that overall looks its best. And I think I'm going to choose this layer. Now it's starting to get a little aggressive and the lightning is starting to turn weird. But I do like that extra aggressive sharpening. I just wouldn't choose that as my base layer. So this would be my base layer. So this is the one that I'm going to draw from as my base layer. Then just using simple masking techniques, all you have to do is mask in more or less sharpening into your image. By using masks. Again, you can set this up as an action, push a button, blop, 
there you go and this is where you would be then it's up to you to either erase in or mask in and out the sharpening where you want extra sharpening and the the more aggressive sharpening or the less aggressive sharpening that you're easing into the image is the ideal sharpening that you can get today for web so as an example this one has more aggressive sharpening what I could do here is I could hold down Option or Alt, then click on my mask, and I have a black mask that's hiding this layer. Black conceals, white reveals in Photoshop. Now I can go to a white paintbrush, so click right here, and that'll ensure that these are black and white, pure black and white. Come up to my paintbrush, make sure that my opacity is 100%, normal, right click, I'm going to make sure it's a soft brush. I use my brackets on my keyboard. And now I can paint on this mask. You can be either on the layer or the mask. Either of those can be active. And I'll be on the mask, make sure that the mask is active. Then I come in here very carefully and decide, hey, where do I want to add more sharpening? And there's different theories about this. Some people like to have more sharpness in the front, less in the back is a nice transition. Or some people even like to sharpen way in the background to help lead the eye into the depth of your image. So there's different theories on that. Or just go around and say, hey, you know what? This looks, this area here doesn't look as sharp. So I'm painting on it. Okay, that looks a little more sharp. Over here doesn't look as sharp. So I'm gonna paint on that. You can choose different opacities of a brush. So you're brushing it in slower or faster. Let's say your foreground, you want more sharpness in your foreground maybe. You can ease that into your image, try to avoid any kind of artifacting. Maybe you want the whole entire image sharp from front to back, top to bottom. Again, a lot of theories that are effective in your sharpening protocol. That's something you'll have to figure out that you can paint it in. Then, after you've done that, you can also use a soft copy if you want and paint out like your halos on the ridge or any weird artifact you may see. Maybe paint it out of your entire sky so there's no grittiness or graininess there. So it's all up to you on where you want to place the sharpening. But the key is, is with the step down method and the over sharpening and then stepping down again, you're getting the finest web sharpening that is available in the world today. For more information, go to markmetternick.com, and I got a whole slew of video tutorials there that may very well benefit your own workflow. Cheers.